Treasurer, thanks very much for your time. Why did you deliver the mid-year budget update today and not wait for the first receipts of the, mineral, uh, the, the minerals resource rent tax? Well, first of all, it's, it's due. It's uh, almost six months since the last budget. I note there's been a lot of criticism, but the fact is it's not unusual to have a mid-year update uh, at this time. Uh, and I made the point, and I made the point for weeks, that in terms of what's going on elsewhere in the global economy, uh, we're pretty clear about, uh, about that, and we won't get any resolution to that until early in the new year. So in, in the interest of certainty, and in terms of uh, making savings now, in terms of the budget in 12-13, uh, it was a good idea idea to get it done sooner rather than later. But as for this criticism about the MRRT, it's just simply a furphy. We've written down resource rent tax revenues substantially uh, in this uh, outlook. Why? Because commodity prices are down dramatically and they are profits-based taxes which uh, go up when uh, prices are up and they go down when prices are down. So we've uh, had a substantial write-down of profit-based taxes. So this sort of criticism is just a silly negative approach uh, of the opposition, not based in fact at all. But delivered on the same day as, as companies are paying their first instalments, so doesn't that, it create so the perception <laughs> you're ducking it? No, so they'd like you to believe. The fact is they are submitting some information today, but there won't be any real indication of what the outlook for that is in one quarter, let alone a year, in the next day or in the next week, or for that matter, probably in the next month. There was a suggestion in the last couple of weeks that only the two big Rio and B BHP would be paying this. Is well, that is that right as far as you well, can well, tell? <laughs> well, I don't uh, think it's right. Uh, and there's been a lot written about resource rent taxes in Australia, which is clearly untrue. Uh, we have uh, forecast in the update uh, that we'll get $9 billion over the Ford estimates in terms of resource rent taxation. And that's, uh, that's there in black How do you know Treasury's white. going to be right on this, though? Because they've been wrong so much lately in terms of being unable to stay in touch with what's happening in China. No, sorry, I, that's, that's just Their, their projections no. have had, had to be revised every, no, every no, budget. The budget sorry, deficit was $12 billion, went to $40 billion. I'm sorry, that's not right. I mean, th that sort of criticism pretends that uh, somehow uh, that Treasury should foresee an impact of, say, the biggest natural disaster in our history um, and uh, have forecast it before it happened, or that Treasury should have forecast before it happened uh, of a severe bout of instability in the European Union at the end of last year. The fact is that forecasters uh, make assumptions uh, and do it uh, using procedures uh, which are highly regarded. Our forecasters are some of the best in the world, but they can't forecast what's not known. And so much of this criticism is so completely unreasonable and irrational. OK. Is it part of the timing of this mid-year update going a little bit earlier? No, it's no, a few no, weeks the, earlier. No, the, the mid -year is it to give the RBA a bit of time to think about it before November, well, the November I, meeting? I think it delivers, certainly. But we're delivering this mid-year update, which is not much different from two or three updates that I've done when we've been in government. It is after two of the updates that were done by Peter Costello. The whole point about a mid-year update is that it should ideally happen at the six-month point. Well, that six-month point is up in two weeks. So it's not radically out of kilter. There have been uh, mid-year updates well before now in the past, and there have been ones after. It's just one of those sort of points that has been made by the opposition to basically throw mud, but it doesn't have any basis in reality. Are you with an eye to November and the RBA meeting in the first week? Look, I think there was uh, many good reasons why we were better off delivering it earlier to deliver clarity about our intentions, given that we wouldn't have any more accurate information about what was going on in the global economy into early in the new year, which would be after it was due. So it was better in terms of certainty, better to make the saves now so we could hit surplus in 12-13, given the $21 billion worth of revenue write down. So I think it was a common sense thing to do and it was for, for the good of the country. In terms of the the, the global forecast. You made a lot of the, the global headwinds and the uncertainty in Europe, the slower than expected recovery in the United mm. States. Is is five and a half percent unemployment that, that that's been forecast for the next couple of years optimistic? Well, I think it's, uh, it, it matches the forecast that we've got. We've got the headwinds of what's going on in the global economy, but we're forecasting around trend growth. And we're still forecasting that we're going to go grow stronger this year and next than any other major advanced economy. So we've done really well on employment. I mean, we've created 800,000 jobs in the period that this government has been in power. And because we acted so swiftly during the global financial crisis to support employment and small business, our labour market has been far stronger. And we as a nation have reaped the 
benefit of that. Uh, but we've still got a very sizable investment pipeline in our economy. It's coming off a bit. We've still got solid consumption. All of those things mean that we've got solid growth around trend. And when you've got solid growth around trend, uh, then you can expect to have those sorts of employment outcomes. The cost of immigration is up $1.2 billion because of the larger than expected numbers of mm. asylum seekers arriving by boat. Last year it cost $1.4 billion for the whole year. It's going to be much worse, isn't it, the cost involved in this? Well, there's been this? a substantial cost to the budget of the, uh, of the increase uh, in, uh, in, those, uh, in those people uh, coming by boat. That's why, back in January, we made the offer. Uh, to the opposition uh, to come to the table so we could get offshore processing up and running. And of course, it took the whole Houston approach uh, to get something through the parliament so we could get offshore processing Are you, going. Are you confident though those costs will come off because the boats continue to arrive? Yes, but what we have to do is to get all of those measures in place, and I'm confident that when we get all of those measures in place, they will stem uh, the number of people that are coming by boat. But we were delayed from January uh, by the negative approach of Mr Abbott and the opposition who wouldn't come to the table so we could get in place offshore processing. Well, haven't you given any estimate on how much Nauru and Manus is going to cost? Uh, because the, there are commercial and confidence negotiations going on with companies at the moment, uh, and we don't normally uh, put those in our published papers. Uh, when the negotiations are done, when they're completed, uh, they will be accounted for. Income tax instalments paid monthly for the large companies as opposed to quarterly. Mm -hmm. Has there been any consultation at all on that? Has this been proposed to you by business groups or is this going to catch them by surprise? Well, we think it's a logical reform uh, of the system and it's done elsewhere in the world. We think it will make the system much more responsible and much more predictable. Uh, we said we'll start it from the 1st of January uh, 2014. Uh, so we're giving plenty of notice of it, something like 14 months. So. We'll engage in a consultation with the business community about it, but it's not about paying in total more tax. It's certainly about the timing of when it's received. So they're not paying an extra dollar in that? No, no they're not paying an extra dollar, but it's certainly it will bring forward some of their payments. Ba the baby bonus has been reduced for second, third, fourth babies to $3,000, still $5,000 for, for the first births, baby. Except for multiple births. OK. But, but I just want to make that point. Sure. Why not go further? Well, if, 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 if it's about putting it on a sustainable footing and the, the upfront costs are done at 5000 why don't you go further? Well, we, we've outlined the reason why we settled on 3000 and the reason is that when it was bought in originally at about $3,000, uh, they settled on the rationale for it principally was to help with all those one-off purchases when a bub arrives. Well, uh, we've left it at 5000 and most of those purchase will, purchases will be made then. I'm sure there are a whole, whole host of other costs as well, but we think 3000 uh, is a reasonable figure. To, to make it sustainable entirely, do you, do you think it will have to come down further in the future? No, no. I, I, the government has outlined its reasons uh, here and we think this is sustainable over time. The private health insurance rebate is going to be um, well, linked essentially to CPI now or commercial increases, whatever is, is less. That, that's going to save you $700 million over the forward estimates. Do you want it do you personally believe it should go entirely? No, I don't. Uh, I'm a supporter of it, but it has to be sustainable uh, over time. And uh, we put in place the means testing regime, which means that people like you and I uh, are not necessarily entitled to receive it. Uh, but there are plenty of people out there who struggle with private health insurance and want to keep it. And that's what the rebate is there for those people who need some help. Uh, but we also have to make sure that the expenditure over time uh, is sustainable, which is why the CPI measure is in place. Treasurer Swan, thanks for your time. Thank you.